Hello there, my name is Ismaus and uh, this is an update to the cloth library add-on. So I've added a few features, I like uh, cloth pattern design and uh, in today's video I want to demonstrate how that works. So all the previous functionality is still available, you still have the pre-made assets and the simulatable assets. Uh, let me just bring a dummy here, just as a base to work with, uh, just uh, use my quick functions add-on just to turn on random colors here so that I can start working here. So yeah, let's design a cloth, maybe, I don't know what to design, maybe a shirt, a t-shirt uh, using uh, the new features. So you see that uh, we have a new pattern design feature here. And uh, what you do with this is uh, you can design patterns. So you can just use a mesh like this. Now let me create a simple shirt, I think. Let me first hide these bones, or oh, amateur, bring back plane. I just want to show you how this works. So I can just say these are going to be my patterns. I can create under the pattern uh, panel. I can, you can choose the resolution you want. I can, let me choose 50. Uh, the higher the figure, the more resolution you want, you, you will get. So I can just use create panel or create pattern and uh, this will create a cloth. Now if I go to wireframe, you can see how this has created a pattern. Uh, has subdivided the mesh the mesh so that is easy to s simulate so if i go to edit mode you can see that uh, i have this uh, mesh here and i can select uh, a shirt let me select this edge uh, i would recommend to have uh, the statistics on uh, so that you can see the number of vertices you want because you want to select two even uh, two edge loops uh, that have the same number of or uneven a uh, number of uh, edges are like this. So we have 36 edges. So I think that's good. Uh, then you can just go under the pattern, uh, the pattern design, uh, create a sims and uh, you get sims like that. What you want to avoid is uh, uh, a zigzag pattern like this. You want, that's why you want to maintain, I've just used control Z to undo that. That's why you want to create, uh, to have an even selection number of vertices. So let me do that actually. So I can select from here to here and that shows that I've selected 16 vertices. So 16 plus 16, that sh that should give us, is it 32? So that is 35, now that's 32. So if I create a new seam, uh, that should give me uh, that kind of, it, this will give you better uh, sewing patterns uh, than if you don't have an even. Let me just, but I'm not, uh, for this demonstration, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, since this is just a demo, uh, when you're creating the cloth yourself, you can be a little bit more careful. So uh, let's create another sewing line here. And uh, yeah, this one was actually perfect. Now, if you hit play, you can see that uh, the cloth starts to sew itself uh, like that. It will fall off if you have gravity on, uh, but uh, we don't have it on here. It's just that uh, the cloth is not being tightened at the top here. Uh, again, you can uh, find better sewing patterns to use. And just bring this a bit closer and here a bit closer like that. And uh, another thing I might do is uh, I want this part here to be a collar. So I can either delete this part here or should have made uh, the, let me get a, a, a t-shirt sewing pattern, t-shirt uh, pattern. I'm kind of forgetting how they look. Uh, so something like this should be what we are aiming for. So let me maybe split this screen, have my image editor here and just drag an image from Google to use here. So yeah, let, let's, uh, I can actually just drag it directly into the viewport. Like that. And uh, just trace out uh, this, so let me do that. And uh, let me reduce the opacity of this, so this doesn't. Okay, now I can simply just trace out this pattern. And uh, something like that now 
Now you want this to be filled like that. Actually, yeah, you want this to be filled like that. So that's the left side, shift D, mirror this on the Y side. Bring this closer, shift D, mirror this on the other side. And now we can go back to the cloth library under the design panel, make sure this is recording. Under the design panel, you can use convert this to a pattern and uh, depending on the resolution, uh, you get uh, different subdivisions. Now, then all you have to do is start sewing these together. So again, if it looks jagged like this, it means that uh, your resolution is a bit high. So the higher the resolution, uh, the more clean uh, the, uh, this, the pattern is going to look, but it doesn't really matter a lot, especially since this is a close simulation and uh, you're going to sew things, uh, sew things together. Uh, you, you can try out different resolutions and see what will work for you. So I want to sew this uh, to this here. So I'll go to create sewing lines like that. Uh, grab this and this, this and this. Uh, create sewing lines like that. Now if I hit play, you can see it starts to sew just like that. Uh, the back also might need to be sewed. So we're going to do that. So grab this and uh, this. Create sewing lines like that. Hit play and I uh, should be good to go. Can even shade smooth. And uh, now you see the cloth is starting to fly up. Uh, that's because uh, we don't have gravity turned on. So what I can do is just let it seem for a bit up to around there, then apply the cloth. And uh, that should get rid of the cloth th simulation. Uh, but uh, everything is still set up. So all I have to do is re add uh, the cloth. Uh, simulation uh, by clicking in the add cloth modifier again and that should bring back uh, the th everything together but now uh, we can start from this rest position instead of uh, starting from where the patterns were and now I can also turn on gravity so that uh, the cloth can start to fall uh, down like that. Now one thing I, you might notice is that a t-shirt doesn't really have this back seam so what you can do is uh, I'll go to edit mode and let me Go to edit mode. Uh, the seams are still there and uh, you can select uh, the seams you have already created like that. You can see that is there. Uh, the back one is also still there. So what you can do then, uh, if you don't want that, after applying uh, the cloth seam, you can remove that seam by just going under, by using something like, uh, so we have, you'll see that uh, you, ha you will have this uh, weld uh, modifier. If you don't have it, you can add it yourself uh, under the world uh, mod uh, the world world modifier, and uh, you you want to select. So, are uh, the sewing patterns? If you go to edit mode, uh, they only show in edit mode. You see that uh, the sewing patterns are just vertex groups are like this. So just select the vertex group, uh, so that you and uh, make note of the name. So this is zero zero two. I just use it here and uh, just use it to merge uh, the vertices. Don't uh, merge it too much. If you're seeing this kind of black line, uh, that's uh, usually because your normals are not correctly calculated. So recalculate them using Shift N and uh, you can see that now we don't have that seam anymore. And I think I can get away with a lower re a world threshold or something like that. You can apply that modifier and uh, reapply the, re-add the cloth modifier Hit play, now everything. You can see the back seam has been gotten rid of. And uh, let's go back here, turn back the gravity, hit play, and uh, you can see we have a cloth. Now, the other part that we need, we need to add another seam here. We need to add a seam, so I'm just going to grab this edge and this edge, grab this and this. Uh, create a seam like that. And uh, if at any point you want to get rid of a seam, you can select it and uh, just get rid of it like that. Hit play, everything should still work just fine. Uh, so if you have ever used a mother as designer, I think this is, I was going for something similar, uh, at least uh, this similar functionality like that. So I'm just going to grab this 
and this and create sewing lines again grab here come back here sewing lines as sorry select that and then that uh, create sewing lines like that hit play and uh, that should start welding things together so i'm noticing that uh, the armpit area here uh the patterns are a bit small or tight so what i can do is just maybe scale this up a bit in edit mode and uh, uh, that should uh, and uh, I think my maximum sewing force is also a bit low so I'll just bring that up and, uh, for now since we are still simulating I can turn back the the gravity to zero so that the sewing uh, works correctly and uh, yes have something like that you can also try checking your normals just to make sure that uh, everything is correct and it seems like yeah it is and uh, you might also want to increase the simulation quality to get a better uh, simulation. It's going to be a bit slower uh, because Blender is doing a little bit more uh, to calculate everything. And yeah, another thing you can do since this is still these are still patterns, you can see, select any phase, Control L, just push them out a bit uh, so that uh, the simulation is a bit better, and then you can playback bring back uh, the gravity let me bring back uh, gravity here and we have ourselves a shirt and uh, what you can do now is uh, if you want you can also add a smooth corrective uh, to kind of smoothen uh, things a bit just a tiny bit you don't have to uh, the, the factor shouldn't be too much you can also turn on just use smooth and uh, just make things look much smoother and uh, this would uh, work best if you also have a weld modifier so if you add a weld modifier uh, to get rid of these sewing lines you can do that like that and now you have something like that let me first make a backup copy of this just in case I want to make any changes like that uh, then I can uh, apply everything I can apply the world like that now one thing you might want is to also have uh, the sewing lines showing and uh, the great thing is that these sewing lines are still there uh, they have been merged after we apply the modifier but they are still there in the vertex group as vertex group so I can search for them I can select uh, that sewing line control b to bevel it like that uh, use your middle mouse wheel to add in an extra edge control minus or just select the middle edge just make sure you are in vertex mode select the middle edge push it in and you basically get a vertex and basically get a sewing line there if you want it you can select the second control b just like that push that in using alt s like that I uh, also know that there is a there should be a seam somewhere here so I can okay this was the back seam we don't need that I can uh, select the other seam control B like that and I can see yeah something like that you can apply this another feature I might I want to show you show off is that uh, say we want to add a color here all you want to, all you can do all you need to do is uh, say you can uh, add a circle oh, we don't need that many vertices let's try 16 actually it doesn't even matter because uh, when we convert it to a pattern it will just add uh, the uh, the resolution itself by itself so let's go into edit mode extrude this down so so let's imagine this is our color now maybe we don't have this part we can convert this into a pattern like that and then if we simulate you can see it's just it just falls down like that uh, but uh, another thing we could do if us apply this another thing we could do is uh, join this to this mesh control j and now we are single object but uh, we have lost the cloth modifier so let's add that back and uh, now i want this color to be attached to this part so all i have to do is select these edges and uh, connect them so you can obviously design a better color than I have here, but uh, 
want just this is for demonstration purposes uh, so I'll select uh, this edge this edge this edge here up to around there connect it with this here and I can use again uh, the create sewing lines are like that and that should give me a sewing line like that if I hit play you can see the rest of the cloth is also simulating which is something you might want something you might not so what I can do is just go into edit mode again select the already simulated part the parts that I don't want to be added to the simulation are like that and uh, you see under uh, there is also a freeze selected option so I can freeze that hit play and uh, this part only the parts that is not selected will be simulated so I can come back here select uh, this edge loops by the way I'm using control click uh, to do that so select so I'll just select this loop uh, it goes around like this like this up to around there uh, create sewing lines like that and you can see we have ourselves a color you can use a higher resolution uh, to get a b better results but uh, this is for demonstration purposes and uh, yeah you can apply the cloth and if you want you can also reapply it apply reapply cloth uh, you might still have you st let me see you go here edit mode you can see we still have the frozen parts so if I simulate uh, actually I think it has been removed so let's go back to here uh, if you ha still have uh, frozen parts you can unfreeze all and uh, that should uh, bring back the entire thing into simulation and uh, the great thing about this is that uh, since well, let me remove this backup option uh, which I don't think we're going to need uh, is that uh, with this we can have this animated we ha can have you can animate the character so you can do something like that like uh, now it's hit play now it's intersecting because if we go to uh, the cloth modif uh, to the let me see let me see and if we go to the character here or the character you can see that the collision is above uh, the amateur so the collision is not being included in the deformation so let's bring this down hit play now you can see that uh, the cloth is uh, deforming with the deformation of the character so if I play back this you can see basically the cloth is uh, working as it should yeah so that's how you can use other cloth modifier you can choose to be a little bit more detailed than, than I was and uh, yeah thank you for watching hope you find the add-on very useful